Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to a brand new week of AutoLine Daily. We're glad you've joined us. And now let's get to the news. General Motors is looking at selling its giant automatic transmission plant in Strasbourg, France. The plant makes rear-drive six-speed automatic transmissions. ZF and a company called Punch International, a contract manufacturing service company based in Belgium, are both interested in buying the plant. Interesting backstory to the Strasbourg facility. When it first started building six-speed automatics, General Motors didn't even use them. They sold them to BMW. In fact, BMW still accounts for roughly half of the plant's output. Aston Martin wants someone, anyone, to take a stake in the automaker. According to Bloomberg, Investment Dar Company, the Kuwaiti-based firm that owns the iconic British luxury car maker, has received several bids for Aston. Invest Industrial, a European private equity fund, offered over $400 million, but that offer was topped by Indian automaker Mahindra. The winning bidder will receive 50% of the voting rights and 40% of the equity. Well, we knew it wouldn't take long for former Audi executive Johan de Nyssen to start making changes at Infiniti once he took over there. Now, Infiniti will be expanding its sales effort to Brazil. The brand will launch with the FX crossover and a yet unnamed sports sedan. Sales will not start until the end of 2014 and will be limited to Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, but will be expanded after that. And talk about expansion. Infinity is in the process of moving into Singapore, Chile, the Dominican Republic, South Africa, and Australia, and Hong Kong, which is where the Japanese brand now has its new headquarters. Looks like Hyundai and Kia are getting dinged for misrepresenting their fuel economy. Edmunds.com reports a decline in the purchase intent of consumers searching for new cars on its website. And it says purchase intent correlates well with how sales will perform over the next three months. But I think other automakers could be in trouble over the fuel economy their cars deliver in the real world versus what the EPA fuel economy label promises. In my test drives of the latest hybrids from Ford and Toyota, they don't come anywhere near the EPA label. In fact, small turbocharged gasoline engines with automatic transmissions do not seem to do well in real world fuel economy. I think this is going to become a much bigger issue in the weeks to come. General Motors just unveiled an electric vehicle in China called the Sail Springo EV. The car, which was developed in China, has a range of 130 kilometers, that's about 80 miles, and its top speed is about 80 miles an hour. It takes seven hours to charge using a 220 volt connection. The Sail Springo EV goes on sale in the first half of next year with a starting price of around $41,000. Say, have you seen this carbon fiber wheel yet? It's very impressive, and coming up next, I'll be sitting down with a guy who figured out how to make it. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Carbon Revolution is the name of an Australian company that's figured out how to make wheels out of carbon fiber. Ashley Denmead is the design director of the company and he recently visited our studios. I'm talking right now with Ashley Denmead, the design director for a company called Carbon Revolution. Great having you here, Ashley. Thanks, John. Pleasure and we've to got to here. talk about these carbon fiber wheels that you've come up with here, one piece carbon. Let's start out. What's the advantage of these from a weight standpoint over other wheels? So our front wheel, which we've got here in, in front of you, is 15 pounds, and it's a 19 by 8.5 inch wheel. So that's a, about a 40 to 50% weight saving over a standard aluminum wheel from an OEM. 
And the, the bigger rear wheel here, the, what size and weight is that? So that's a 19 by 12 inch wheel, and that's 17 pounds. Unbelievably weight, and, and in the right place, taking it out of unsprung weight. Exactly, exactly. Rotating and unsprung weight, so big advantages in performance and efficiency. You're one of the inventors of the wheel. What was the biggest technical challenge in developing it? Um, so I guess um, there's a number of technical challenges, uh, both from a product perspective and a process perspective. So uh, in order to, to get this product to market, it's um, not only uh, solving all the challenges technically for the part to make it work and and deal with the conditions on a vehicle, but also being able to make it manufacturable um, efficiently and, uh, and cost effectively, which is, um, I guess, the, the big challenge in most composite products. Most of us in the automotive industry are familiar with Formula One and having to build bodies and uh, the, the monocoque with an autoclave, very high pressure and temperature. My understanding is you don't need that for this wheel. No, we've developed a proprietary process where we um, we get away from, from those uh, types of expensive equipments um, such as autoclaves and, and are able to uh, efficiently produce the product um, at a very high quality using uh, other means which is uh, part of our proprietary process. And uh, I imagine that you chose these wheel sizes because these fit what uh, a Porsche 911 GT3 and... Right, these two, two wheel sizes we've got here today are um, fitments for uh, uh, Porsche 911s, Audi R8s, Lamborghini, Gallardos. Um, early next year we'll have new fitments available for other vehicles as well, such as the BMW M3 and that sort of thing. So. What does a wheel like this cost? Uh, so a set of wheels, uh, so the four wheels for those cars that I've just mentioned is uh, right around 15,000 US retail. $15,000, so this is for a very high-end customer. Initially, yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's obviously uh, very much a performance technology. It's a it's a big change for the industry. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, it's expensive initially, but eventually the the cost will come down, and and we hope to see them on a lot more vehicles. Do you think that we'll ever see these on mass production vehicles, a common car that somebody like me might run out and buy? <laughs> I, I certainly hope so. I I, I think it's um, I think it's going to happen. It'll just take a bit of time. Um, we'll get the, the process and everything to be efficient and cost effective and um, people that we, we believe will take up the technology pretty quickly. Very good. Ashley, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, John. Denmead tells me that the wheels use machined aluminum valve stems from Germany that work with tire pressure monitors. You don't need any spe special tire mounting equipment, though they ask that touchless machines are used as with any high-end wheel to avoid scratches or damage, and the wheels are balanced using lead weights with adhesive backings. Before we go, don't forget that we'll be webcasting live from the LA Auto Show on Wednesday starting at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, which is 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be doing interviews with the top executives at the show, as well as showing you the latest cars being unveiled there. Put it on your calendars so you do not miss the latest developments at the LA show. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.